Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 2. In this video we're going to continue to learn about sets. So at some point in your math class you've probably heard about something known as a Venn diagram. If you haven't I can promise you by the time you get out of high school you're going to encounter at some point either in a math class or outside of a math class. But a Venn diagram is just a way to visually represent the relationship between sets. It's actually a very, very useful thing, even when you're not working with math. So as an example, let's say we have a universal set which contains the elements 1 through 10. Then we have a set A which contains the elements 1 through 3, and a set B which contains the elements 3 through 6. So the idea here is that we draw a rectangle to represent the universe or the universal set. So let me just put a U inside of here to say this whole thing represents set U. So all of my elements here should be listed inside the rectangle somewhere. Now I have two subsets of U. I have A, which is a subset of U, and I have B, which is a subset of U. And each of these is represented with a circle. And notice how the circles are inside of the rectangle, right, inside of our universe. So I can label each circle. I can label one of them as A and the other as B. It doesn't matter which is which. And I would list elements inside of the area that it corresponds to. And one thing I want to bring your attention to right away, I want you to notice how there's a section of overlap. This is used to place any element that is part of set A that is also part of set B. So a common element. And when we start listing things here, we see we have 1, 2, and 3 for set A, and we have 3, 4, 5, and 6 for set B. 3 is common to each, so that's going to go in this section of overlap. Now for set A, I have 1 and 2 that are not common to B, so that's just going to go over here, somewhere outside of the overlap. Same thing goes for set B. I'm going to put 4, 5, and 6 in here, but outside of the overlap. Now, elements that are part of the universal set that are not part of A and not part of B would just go somewhere inside of this rectangle. They just can't go inside of these two circles because, again, they're not part of A or B. So I have 7, I have 8, I have 9, and I have 10 that fit that criteria. So this is our first Venn diagram. Let's just go ahead and label it. This is our Venn diagram. And again, it's a visual way to represent the relationship between the sets. I can look at this right away, and I can tell that I have a universal set that's 1 through 10. I have a set A that's 1, 2, and 3. I have a set B that's 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I can also tell that A and B have a common element of 3. So some key information that I can pull right away just by looking at a picture versus kind of looking at these sets in the roster method and trying to kind of pull information out that way. Now, a couple of things we want to talk about now. The first thing would be the complement of a set. So this is represented, if I wanted the complement of A, I would write A prime or A complement like that with a superscript C on top of the A. So A complement contains all of the elements or members of set U that are not elements or members of set A. So in this case, because set A has 1, 2, and 3, I would just exclude those, and I would say, okay, I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 as the complement of A. And again, I go back to my Venn diagram. I can quickly see that if this is set A, everything inside this circle, and I know I didn't color in the lines perfectly, but just you know, kind of bear with me, everything outside of that circle is the complement of A. So it's very quickly to get that. I can just see that it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Very easy to get that information. As another example, let's take B complement. So let's erase this, and let's take, you can put B prime or B complement like this. And in this scenario, I could either do it this way. I can say, okay, this contains 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I can mark those out and say it's 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Or visually, I could look at my Venn diagram. And if I look at B right here, everything outside of this is going to be the complement of B. So I'm looking at, again, 1, 2, 
I have 7, 8, 9, and 10. 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, let's erase this real quick. Let's now talk about the union of two sets. So the union of two sets, let's say A and B, is denoted with a symbol that kind of looks like a U. So we'd say A, let me do it in a different color, union, and then let's return to the other color, B, is equal to, this is going to be the set of all elements of A along with all elements of B. But with one key thing here, we don't want to double list anything, okay? So if I put in all the elements from set A, that's one, two, and three, then all the elements from set B, I've already listed three. I don't need to list it again. So then just four, five, and six. And again, the way you look at the union is, if I look at my Venn diagram, it's everything that's contained in these two circles. So everything in these two circles, what's not gonna go in there would be anything outside of the circle. So things like eight, seven, nine, and 10, things that are outside of the circles, you can very quickly look at the Venn diagram and get the union. Now, the other thing that we would talk about would be the intersection. So let me erase this real quick. The intersection just looks like a flipped upside down U. So I'm just going to basically reverse that symbol and make it look like this. So this is intersection. And the intersection of A and B is going to be the set of all elements that belong to both A and B. And again, that's where you're going to look at your overlap. So if I look at my Venn diagram, this is the intersection. Again, the set of elements that belong to both A and B. So that's going to have one element. So A intersect B is equal to, we just have one element and that element is three. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here we have a universal set where we have the elements A, B, C, D, G, H, N, Q, and T. And everything is in lowercase to keep you from confusing it with the set names. Then we have set A, again, capital A, and this contains the elements G, H, and N, and then set B, which contains the elements T, Q, and N. So the first question I have here is, what is the union between A and B? So A union B equals what? Well, let's fill in our Venn diagram. So let's let this be set A, let's let this be set B, and in set A I have G, I have H, and I have N. And notice where I put the N. It's because it's common to A and B. So for set B, I have T, I have Q, and again, I have N. N is in the overlap section because it's a member of set A and also set B. Now, in my universal set, I have elements that are not part of A and B. I know that A falls outside of those two circles. So does B, so does C, so does D. G doesn't, H doesn't, N doesn't, Q doesn't, and T doesn't. So if I want the union of A and B, this is going to be equal to, we'll have G, H, N, T, and then Q. And again, the main thing here is to make sure you don't double list anything. So I have N here and here. It only gets listed once when I fill out this information. What if I ask for the intersection? If I said, and let me kind of go in here and edit. So if I ask for the intersection, the symbol looks like this, just an upside down U, and I know that's not perfect, but just pretend it is. Again, I'm looking for the overlap between these two sets. So the overlap, if I look at the Venn diagram, this is gonna be right here, that's real easy to get, that's N. So that's A intersect B. And then what if I asked for some other things? Let's say I asked for, a complement, A complement. And I could do it this way, or again, I could do it this way, doesn't matter. Well, that's anything that's outside of A. So I could just highlight this set right here, and I could look for things that are outside of A, and what I'd come up with is T, Q, A, B, C, and then D. And again, it doesn't have to be in alphabetical order. The order is irrelevant when you're listing the elements of a set. And if I ask for B complement, that would be anything that's outside of this circle here. 
So let me highlight that real quick for you. So for this case, I'm looking at what? I'm looking at A, B, C, G, H, and D. All right, let's take a look at another one. So now we're going to have our universal set, which contains 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. So basically the odd numbers starting at 1 and going through and including 15. Then set A has 1, 3, and 5. Set B has 3, 5, and 7. And set C has 9, 13, and 15. So let's label this as set U. Let's label this as set A, set B, and set C. So now what you're going to notice is set A and B have two common elements, 3 and 5. So those are going to be put in the overlap section. And then for set A, we have 1 that's outside of that. For set B, we have 7 that's outside of that. And then for set C, we have nothing that's common to A and B. So notice how there's a gap between these circles. Right? We don't want any overlap because there's nothing that's going to be common. So for set C, I'm going to write in 9, 13, and 15. Okay, so also in set U, we have 11. That's not listed in any of these sets here. So that's going to go outside of all those circles. So without referencing to this, let's answer these questions here. So we're just going to look at our Venn diagram. So we have A union B. What is that? That's all the elements of A along with all the elements of B. Again, just don't double list anything. So looking at the Venn diagram, that's easy. It's a 1, a 3, a 5, and a 7. Then if I want A union C, what is that? Well, that's 1, 3, 5, and then 9, 13, 15. And then B union C is what? We have 3, 5, 7, and then 9, 13, 15. Let's see if we can do some other things here. Let's erase this. And let's ask for the intersection in each scenario now. So A intersect B is what? Again, that's your overlap here. So that contains the elements 3 and 5. What about A intersect with C? There is no overlap. Those two sets are called disjoint sets. They have no elements in common. And so this right here would be the null or empty set, right? because this set contains no elements, because there are no elements that are common between set A and set C. Same thing goes for the intersection of B and C. You would put the symbol for the null or empty set. Now we could also go through and we could do the complement of each. So I could do the complement of A, the complement of B, and the complement of C. And again, with our Venn diagram, we can do these very quickly. So for A complements, I would have 7, 9, 13, 11, and 15. For B complements, I would have 1, 11, 9, 13, and 15. And then for C complement, I would have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 11. And again, just looking at the Venn diagram makes things nice and easy to see. If I want A complement, I could shade A and say I want everything outside of that. So that's 7, 11, 9, 13, and 15. If I want B complement, shade B. And I want everything outside of that. So that's 1, 11, 9, 13, and 15. And if I want C complement, I could shade C. And again, I want everything outside of that. So that's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 11. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have a universal set that contains California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, North Dakota, New York, Wyoming, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, Maine, and Wisconsin. Then I have a set A, which is a subset of set U, which contains California, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado. Then I have a set B, which again is a subset of set U, which contains Oregon, North Dakota, New York, and Washington. Now, if I fill this out for set A and set B, what they have in common would be Washington, 
and Oregon. So let's say this is set A and this is set B. So for set A, I would also have California and I would have Colorado. For set B, I would also have North Dakota and I would have New York. And outside of these sets, in set U, let me use a different color, I would have Wyoming, I would have Texas, I would have Georgia, I would have South Carolina, I would have Maine, and I would have Wisconsin. So once we have our Venn diagram built, it's easy to go through and answer some questions. So let's say I start out by asking you for A union B. What's that equal to? Well, that would be California, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, North Dakota, and New York. If I asked you for the intersection of A and B, that would be the overlap section. So that would contain two states, Washington and Oregon. If I asked you for A complement, again, I could highlight this right here, and I could say that A complement contained North Dakota, New York, Wyoming, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, Maine, and Wisconsin. And then lastly, if I ask for B complement, this would contain the elements. I could erase this, and I could highlight this. Okay, I could highlight this. And I would have California, Colorado, Wyoming, Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, Maine, and Wisconsin. 